since I'm putting this to YouTube, I'm going to say I'm Sherry Green, and this is my presentation about my trip to Africa this past winter break. And now I'm going to share my screen. I know. And it's a very casual thing. So let me bring this down so I can see you guys. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my Africa slide. Okay. Excellent. So like I said, um, this was my first trip to Kenya and Tanzania. When you're over there, everyone says, have you been to Africa before? And I was like, I've been to Egypt, but that was a long time ago, um, like over 20 years ago. So this is my first time to East Africa. And let me tell you, it was so amazing, the safari that I went on. I am ready to take my kids to um, South Africa to go on a safari next winter break. So we'll see if that actually happens, but it was just an amazing experience that I didn't think it was gonna be as good as it was. So I'm gonna talk about, we went, um, we got to Nairobi a day early. So my friend Marianne and I, we did the Naya, Naya Nami storytelling tour, storytelling tour, which I'll talk about. We were at Kenya and Tanzania for safaris and those were all with Marianne. And then Kilimanjaro, I was supposed to have a hiking partner, but she got COVID. So I actually went on my own with a guide and all the porters. So, and I felt safe all the time. Gabe was a little bit worried about me. Um, so um, I had um, my guide text pictures to him every day. So he saw that I was alive every day on the mountain. So this is the Nyanami Nairobi storytelling tour. They call it with street children, but as you can see, these guys aren't street children. So I put the word former in there and it was an amazing tour of Nairobi. You went to places you didn't go to um, each. So they are former street children on the street, learning the bad ways, learning how to survive. And you read those stories, but they were actually telling you. And each person basically got their own guide. So you can see me on the left with my, my guide and Mary Ann's guide is standing right next to her. And then in the picture of all of us, the guy pointing with me on the right-hand side, I think he was one of the guys in charge of it because he would come and go and then he would show up again. This is us at the market, he would show up um, and then he would go away for a little bit. And then he'd come back when we were at the restaurant and we just walked around seeing Nairobi. Um, Nairobi's very busy. Um, it's not the richest country in the world at all. Um, I would think it's a very poor country from what I saw. Uh, they didn't show us the glamor of Nairobi. They told us how they were on the streets and using drugs and knives, guns. I don't think mine used a gun. I think he had, they had knives. Um, jail time, not the best family life, went back and lived with his mom, hadn't seen his mom in I don't know how many years. And once he got released from jail, decided to go back home and mom thought he was dead. So of course she was thrilled when she saw him. Still not the best family life. He ended up coming back here, met up with these guys and um, lives in a small, basically shanty. And, um, you know, lives off of this and tips and um, goes through everything. I think Marianne said that her guide um, or one of the guys when we were walking through this market, they were the people that were selling things, a lot of sandals were for sale and they were making them right there. So one of the guys went by and ended up like brushing by someone making the shoes. And he was worried that he got glue on his shirt and Marianne was thinking about it and it's, you know, he was probably worried this is one of his better t-shirts that he wears. And if he got glue on it, it wouldn't look good, you know, and you know, they don't have that much. So we both gave them good tips. We, we talked about ahead of time, what we were going to tip. And then we decided that we were going to each give that, we were going to give that same amount, but that same amount each went to each person. So we kind of doubled our tip because the stories are horrific. Um, they're amazing guys providing a service. And then we ended up at a restaurant and this was the most African food that we had was there. So it was really, it was, um, it was really good. But here's a picture in Nairobi of um, the women coming and selling, selling the food. 
on the street, how they make a living. Um, if you've been to any country, really, except for the United States, maybe New York, but in the background on the left picture, you can see how their stands, their stores always have the storefront with the, their stuff in the case in the front, and it's just right there. A lot of times you don't walk into the store, but it's right there on the street. So this was an amazing thing, this tour. And I found it just on um, Travelocity. I was looking for, or TripAdvisor, one of the two, probably TripAdvisor. I was looking for different things to do because we were going a day early. So this was really good. So we used a company called Gate One, and I've traveled with them several times. If you ever use Gate One, you've never used it before, please use me as a reference because I get a $25 um, referral and I think you get $25 off also. Um, but went to six different places on the Gate One tour. And the first three were in Kilimanjaro. And I'm not gonna try to butcher these names. Um, I mean, sorry, the first three were in Kenya. The Maasai Mara Reserve was amazing. That really stood out. And the Giraffe Center showing the um, Rothschild giraffes that were being rehabilitated, that was really good too. And I'll show you a video from there. And we fed the giraffes there. And then the last three were in Tanzania. And the last one, the Nagora Gora Conservation, that just really stands out. That was the last place we went. That's where we saw the endangered black rhino, which was the last of the big five for us to see. And it was just amazing. Um, and I'll talk about that, but we woke up at 5.30 in the morning or we left at 5.30. Just, we were at the first or second car in on that one. And we had the whole place to ourselves at the beginning. And by the time we stopped for breakfast, all of the Land Rovers were back. They were all there again. So, um, in Kenya, we took a hot air balloon ride over the Masai Mara. And it was actually the first time I've ever done a hot air balloon ride. And people, sometimes they say it was okay. It was this, for me, it was amazing. It was, I don't know if it was ra a rarity, but the hot air balloon ride was sunrise. So you can see in the first picture on the left side, you can see the sunrise a little bit. Um, we saw it better when we were at the hotel waking up and before we got out there. But if we were in the air for maybe 90 minutes and it was just spectacular. Um, this was, I think the other, we had two balloons in our group. Um, not our group, our, our um, gate one group, but we had two balloons in the hot air one. So each basket holds like 12 people. It's like huge. I'm like really surprised. Um, but it really was amazing. And we could actually see the way into um, Kenya. So Susan, do you have the ability to mute everyone? Yep, I was just looking at that. I'll take care of it. Uh, thank you, appreciate it. Um, so this was the other one and the guide would point over like, look over there, that's actually um, the Serengeti that you're seeing over in Tanzania. And you could see these balloons because the, the land is just so flat and the Masamara and the Serengeti go together um, because that's where the great migrate, one of the great migrations happened. And if I was gonna ever go back to Tanzania and Kenya, it would be during the great migration just to see all the animals going back and forth. So, um, so I'm gonna play a video and this is still from the hot air balloon. So you can see us moving and they moving. So when I hit play, just give me a thumbs up. Sally, if you can give me a thumbs up. I see you and Edie, if you can hear the sound. <laughs> Look at the baby. Elephant, <laughs> one of the most dangerous animals Is it? in Africa. So at first I was thinking when I was re-listening to this with that sound, I was like, oh my gosh, that's what the elephants, and, but there's no water there. So that was actually the hot, the fire and the hot air balloon, if you heard that. And then you can see the little baby right there. And I, it was probably me that squealed in the video. Oh, look at that baby. And I'm still like, when I saw it, was looking at it again, I'm like, oh, look at that baby. And there were babies everywhere. Mostly baby elephants that we saw were going around. 
and go. So here we are. When you do a hot air balloon ride at sunrise, you have to have a hot air balloon um, breakfast. And that's just water in my glass, of course. Um, and the tree was just beautiful. I don't know what kind of tree it is, um, but you see all those all over the safari, um, more so in Tanzania than in Kenya, but we did see it here. And then here's Marianne and I in at the safari, drinking our orange juice for breakfast. And you can, this is the, we were on the ground here and in Nagora Gora, did we touch the ground in the safari? Every other time we were in the Land Rover, we didn't get out. Um, if you had to go to the bathroom, I guess they would let you out, but we're not out for like five hours at a time. We were out for like probably two or three, maybe three or four hours at a time. So we were fine, um, but we stayed in the Land Rover. There's certain rules that they have to follow and we really, we never got out. So we were here and in Nagora Gora when we stopped for breakfast, we were out there. Um, didn't mean to do that. Okay, can, I did not mean to do subtitles. Uh, you guys can do your own subtitles if you like, I have subtitles on. But this is um, from the hot air balloon and you can see all of them living together. You can see the zebras and the elephants in the top left-hand corner, you can see the antelope. And I'll have pictures of the antelopes and all of them have different names. I just don't know any of them. So I didn't write all that down. Um, these antelope, he called, they called them the um, blue jeans because look at the close one, you can see his legs and the name just stuck that they have blue jeans on. And I didn't include the picture because I can only include so many, but you see them right over the mound in the middle. There's sometimes we, we were driving by them and we saw them literally standing on the mound, so proud that this is my mound and you cannot go around us. And, you know, so. Um, so we are off of, we are out of the hot air balloon. And I, for the safari pictures, for the most part, I've just put all the pictures in one. So you're gonna see one kind of animal all at once. So it could be Kenya, it could be Tanzania. I really don't know the difference. Um, but they say the zebras in Kenya look different than the zebras in Tanzania. I can't tell you that, they look the same to me. Um, but if you're looking at the top right, left-hand one, that looks like on the, the three that are standing, the one on the right, she looks very pregnant. I believe that one's gonna be giving birth soon. And then you can see the ones laying down um, the top right, our, um, our driver and guide, it was the same person, he said that this is how they, they stand a lot of the time. That way they can protect each other and see what's coming. So they stand face to butt basically, so they can see both directions. And then on the bottom left, you've got baby drinking milk. And then on the bottom right, you can see that it's not black. You can see it's a little more brown stripes and brown fuzz on the top. So that's a baby zebra. And they were just so cute. You know, they just, God was just having fun when he created zebras. He really was just looking at them and all their stripes. They're just beautiful. And I was just mesmerized. And you see zebras everywhere. Everywhere we went were zebras. Um, and here are the antelopes. And okay, everywhere you went were antelopes as well. Um, this was probably one of the first places we went to because um, I took lots of pictures of the antelopes. And we have this big guy here with his horns. And I liked his face. He had to have been chewing something because if you look up close, you can see his nose and his mouth are not quite together. Yeah, ah, hello. And now I'm looking at it, it's like his nose is a heart for Valentine's Day, of course, right? So, and then this little antelope guy is the smallest antelope around. And he, you could sometimes, when he, our, our guide was pointing to him, you could barely see him. And he was just so cute. And I don't think he's fast, if I remember right, but he's small so he can hide. So that was the way to stay away from all the predators. And here's my blue jeans guy. They were just, that's all they did was eat. All what the animals do in there is eat, run, 
have sex. I didn't post any of my sex pictures on here, by the way, that was just for Facebook. Um, but I am gonna talk about the ostriches having sex. Um, but they just ate, that's it. They ate most of the day. I mean, life, hello, maybe I wanna be an animal out there, except for, you know, all the predators coming after them, that would be bad. Um, here's the um, birds, the vultures. I thought that was just really cool how they were all on the tree. And I did bring my good camera. I have a camera with a, um, an all-in-one, it's not DS, DLR, I think it's called. I don't know exactly, but it's an all-in-one lens, so I don't have to change lenses. And so some of these pictures, they're a little bit blurry because I went as far out as I could. Um, so these are just some birds. Um, I think the one in the top left is called a long bill something, of course. Um, and you've got your, um, you know what they are on the bottom right. Um, <laughs> the picture on the bottom left, I believe- Flamingo. Thank you. I knew it was an F, my brain goes. When I say dumb things, you guys correct me, please. Um, but the bottom left, that bird is just beautiful. I think that is the bird of Kenya. I don't know the name of it, but it's the Kenya bird. And on the right-hand side, these birds came and were eating crumbs from our breakfast. When we went to Nagora Gora in Tanzania, I told you that was the other time we got out of our um, Land Rover. So we left the hotel probably about 5.30 got to the, um, the entrance of Nagora Gora, probably around six. We were the first people, first or second people in there. So we had the whole place to ourselves. Um, about eight o'clock, we probably stopped for breakfast. They packed a breakfast for us. We came and sat on these logs by a lake and it was just beautiful and wonderful. Um, and by that time, by eight o'clock, all the Land Rovers were in. And this was, um, this was probably Christmas, maybe even Christmas day, if I would look at the calendar. So they were off also. So besides the Land Rovers, which is 90% of what you saw in all the other parks, you only saw Land Rovers. In here, you saw maybe one or two sedans, but you saw vans, families coming without a company taking them. So I guess Nagora Gore, you can come on your own also. So, but it was hugely crowded by the time we left. So it was, we were so happy. Our guide said, you know, are you guys okay waking up at 530? It's gonna be wonderful, let's do it. We all agreed. So this video on the left is these birds, but as I, um, I was walking over to this one place, um, to the bathroom, and I saw this Land Rover there with all these yellow birds inside of it. And I was just snapping pictures and snapping pictures. And the guide was over there talking with another guide and the people weren't in there. And then after a while, the guide says to me, oh, your um, Wolfgang is looking for you. I said, oh, okay, I'm going. And then I looked up, I said, you might wanna tell your people not to eat that sandwich in there because all the birds, he's like, oh my gosh. He didn't know all the birds were in there um, eating this, nip, nipping at this guy's sandwich that they left. So here's the <laughs> So I just thought that was so fun and I, um, sorry, I'm trying to look, get more pictures of more people. Um, and I have tons of, I had my regular camera out taking tons of pictures. When we we're in the Land Rover, I don't have any pictures of the Land Rover, but the Land Rover is what we drove around in all the time, even on the main roads. Um, and then when we went out on safari, they just took the top and they moved it up and over. And then there was enough room for us to stick our heads out and see everything. So the birds were flying in from the top and it was fun. It was just a cool one. And here's our hyenas. And I'll talk about the big five later, but I think the hyena is part of the ugly five. They've got ugly five, big five, um, unusual five. I don't remember any of them. I'm lucky to remember the big five. So 
love the giraffes. Um, you know, you look up close, you don't realize the horns that they have up there that are just so spectacular. And this next video, where is it? Um, this was one of the first videos I took on the left side with the giraffe. And that's how they have to eat down below if they're not eating a pot. <laughs> And then when we went to the giraffe center, they were talking about how the giraffes on the bot, they only have the Rothschild giraffes, which look different. And now that I was looking at these two pictures, I can see the difference. So on the left side, you see the giraffe, the, his bottom half legs are white. You see the whiteness in them. And you look on the left ones, this was in Tanzania and they're brown all the way down. So I can finally see the difference in the animals here. And then these giraffes, these are two males that are fighting for the female or the area or the territory or something. But when they're fighting, they're also risking their lives because their windpipe is in their throat. So when they bend their necks or they hit their neck, they're risking closing off their windpipe and not being able to breathe. than sitting when we were in the Land Rover. Oh, oh, see that, see that. So when we were watching these two, we would see other ones over there. After these two were done, we would look over there and we would see two more fighting. And it was really amazing to see what they were doing and how they were. Um, here is the cheetah. And Marianne explained to me the difference between the cheetah and the leopard, which some of you might know. The cheetah has real dots, has real circles all over him and his teardrops. So here's a picture of the cheetahs that we saw and the hippos. Oh, loved the hippos. You know, sometimes, yes, I do feel like a hippo just laying there, not doing much. I mean, come on. I'm like a fat hippo laying on the ground. Then in a minute, look at me, I'm floating. And how can life get any better? I'm a big hippo. No, I'm not anymore. But if you look on the left one, it's I'm like a hippo. <laughs> it's a hippo raft. I mean, the, he said they get, they do that all the time and they, they kind of just go like that. And I guess they're sleeping or something, but they all get together and they're just laying there sleeping and they're floating in the middle of the river or the lake or wherever they are. So here's my one sex story. So here are the ostriches. And on the left side, the pretty one a lot of times is the male, unlike in the human race, of course. But the um, on the left side, that he's doing kind of like his dance, kind of to entrance, who knows what to the female. But in Africa, when these animals have sex, it's like five, 10 seconds, boom, they're done, move on to the next one. Um, and if you haven't been watching my Facebook, go back and look at the lion. I've got a lion video on there, um, having sex. So, but here, here he is saying, okay, I'm puffing myself up, here I come, finds the female. They turn into one for a few minutes, and then she keeps on moving, like nothing ever happened. She just keeps on going. Um, and then this is, I just love these pictures. I try to take as many close-ups of I can as animals. And here's the ostrich and look at his little, little fuzz on his hair. And I just gorgeous, in my opinion. A ball of gorgeous, but gorgeous. Let's see. Those monkeys were amazing. They were just, this is just the road we were driving on. You can see what the road looks like. So nothing paved and nothing worse. And this is walking. They have the right of way. So 
So, but then this next pick, this next one, I, I have a couple favorite videos and this is one of my favorite videos and I just watch it over and over again. Yeah, done yet. <laughs> Come on. Let's just get on the track. Be quiet. I'm going to watch this one again. Yeah, done yet. <laughs> Love it. Whoops, let me go back. So as you can see, there he is again. He's just so cute. And yes, I don't know what you think about evolution, everything, but look at those hands. We had to have come from chimpanzees somewhere along the line. They anyway, those those are those are hands. They really are. And they are really grooming each other and eating whatever they find. They look like baboons. They might be. There's lots of different ones back there. So, but here are the big five. And what our guide didn't tell us about the big five, which I found out when I researched it, um, was that the big five came about, the name of the big five is when they were being hunted. These are the five, five hardest to hunt on foot. So when they were hunting them on foot, hopefully 50, 75 years ago, we'll talk, well, you know, we'll let that go. Um, these are, were the hardest to actually kill. And I assume kill and retrieve would be my thought. Now with tourism, your goal is to see the big five. And we saw the first four, we saw them in Kenya, no big deal, all is good. We got to Tanzania and we were like, okay, this is the last one we have to see is the rhino. And we know it's an extinct, you know, the, the Nagora Gora would be our only chance. We even asked him in the morning, well, what are our chances of seeing the black rhino? He's like very slim, but we saw him and he's amazing. We only saw one, but he was amazing. So here are the giraffes. And like I said, I like to get up close and you know, this big dummy guy, his face. And I mean, it looks like he's smiling and they're just, they're just beautiful in my opinion. Um, so I think the left one is taken with my camera, the right one is taken with my iPhone. But if I looked at the dates, I'm thinking, looking at these guys, they're the same elephant. But this right hand video I'm about to play is the very last video I took on my trip. And just him walking away is just gorgeous. <laughs> And, you know, Cape Buffalo, eh, we have Buffalo in America. No, these Buffalo, and I haven't seen the Buffalo in America, but when you talk about the big five, you talk about the African Buffalo and these are Cape Buffalo. And they always reminded me of Pippi Longstocking with the horns, just going straight. I mean, the first time I saw them, Pippi Longstocking. Um, and at the end, I'm gonna tell you a story about the Cape Buffalo, about how fierce they really are. Um, but that's one of my favorite pictures with Pippi Longstocking. And here is the leopard. You can see the dots are different. It's not a true dot. It's like the, a splotch. And this is the one of the best pictures I got in the tree. This is not my video. I got this from another group. Oh, the lady I got this from, Susan, is so we had when we were in Kenya, there were 12 of us on our gate one tour. And six of us moved on to Tanzania. So it was Marianne and I, a family of four, and then a family of six. And the family of six was grandma, her, her kids, some, one of her grandkids. And her kids, they grew up, all grew up in Finneytown. They graduated from Finneytown. So one of the guys in the group actually graduated with Jimmy. So. That's amazing. Isn't that? Yep. So but they wouldn't let me post their pictures on Facebook and they really didn't, we never even got a picture because it just never happened, so. Um, but here is the leopard in the tree. They like to eat their kill in the tree. They kill it and they grab it up. So the arrow on the left is pointing to the leopard in the tree. The arrow in the right is the antelope that they dragged up to the tree. Does everyone see that? So it's not a very clear picture, 
but it still shows you what they're doing with their food. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this. Yeah. Oh, wow. You see the leopard coming out of the tree. And then that's all I'm going to show. It's been another minute or so, and then he comes back. But it's just really the leopard is a Yeah. So here he is right there. And I mean, just look at those muscles. And then this is my video. And again, one of my favorites, because it shows you first when you see it, look at his muscles. And then look how close he is to us. And were we ever scared? No. People were like, well, was your guide carrying a gun? I'm like, you know, when we were there, we never even thought about it at all. But I assume then the gun was in his glove compartment or something. But look how close he is to us in this. I mean, he doesn't care that all the Land Rovers are around him watching him. We don't bother him. He doesn't bother us. Really the way it was. You can kind of see in the background the Land Rover right there in the top. So here's Mama. Well, this isn't the Mama Lion yet, but this is the this one I wanted to keep in there because of the paws. Look how big she is. They're going to be in trouble, okay? Nobody There's a closer vehicle. And then you do know that the it's not really the king of the jungle, it's the queen. They are the vicious ones. They are the ones doing the fighting in the world. And then that guy who had sat that one right there. The the it was fun to watch, yes. We're like, oh my gosh! And this one is a mama. You can see her TTs when she walks up and whoops, and I'm going to, at the end, towards the end, you can actually hear her breathing. She was probably so close to giving birth because she was having a hard time breathing, I assume, because of the babies. And then you can also imagine how close we were to actually, so we could hear that and get it in the, um, the video. So like I told you earlier, I like to get the close shots with my camera. So a lot of close shots with the lions. I mean, come on, we all have to lick ourselves and clean ourselves. And there's the king of the jungle. But like I said, the queen is the one who rules the jungle. And you can see the dirt coming up with the lion back there and the lioness. There wasn't a fight. It was just the lioness was getting too close and the male lion was like, mm, I don't want you around here, goodbye. And they did their little, not even a scuffle. And then they were, they didn't even get close. And then everything moved on. So here is the black rhino. Um, so we were, we were eating breakfast around the lake and then we were going to go and I don't remember where it was going to take us to go look in some place we hadn't gone yet. But then he heard on the walkie that there was a black rhino. He's like, and eh, guys, we're going to change course. We're going to go see the black rhino. We have to really move it because he's running. Don't know what he's running from or how long he's going to be there. So we just chucked it. We just went, I mean, went full force. And he's like, okay, hold on. He's still running. We got to get there. And we kept on going. Um, figured, well, he, we knew this was a male and he thinks that he probably had a fight with another male and that's why he was running. So he was running the full length of this lake and these rhinos, they run fast. So, I mean, yes, I was moving in this, but he was moving. He 
he was going that fast the whole way. We watched him and then he got away from us. So we went around to another place. We watched him, he passed us. We stayed put, about 50 Land Rovers went past us. And there was also like some sheriff Land Rovers in there too. So they all couldn't go fast and they had to stay on the road. They couldn't go off road because the police were there. So that was interesting, but it was just so amazing with the Land Rover. I actually bought a little, a little um, banana fibers, little piece of artwork that I didn't buy much while I was there. It was more for the experience. Um, but in my kitchen, I have this picture of the big five um, because I saw them. So I'm like, I had to get something. So this is at the, um, the Rothschild Giraffe Center in Nairobi where we could feed the giraffes and they were rehabilitating them. Um, you can see the white, his white knees on the other side of the fence. And they were just so cute and they were up close. I had to take pictures. I mean, come on. And I mean, this could be a meme. And yes, there was a warning sign that said, well, I'll just- oh. Giraffes head bump, be careful, they head bump. And as you can see this, they do head bump. Oh. And one of the first giraffes they took in was Daisy. So now whenever Daisy passes or da Daisy, there's so many Daisies. So I guess Daisy is ornery this one. So my guide said that was probably Daisy that, that hit me. And I didn't even oh. need to get this. This was in my, I have an iPhone. So it was in my, my live video thing I was taking. I was trying to take a picture and that's what I ended up with. So this was in the, um, when we went from Kenya to Tanzania. And I'll, if there's more time at the end, I'll tell you about how it has a mind of its own, how we were like five, six hours late. But this is the little 18 seater that we took on the way over. And that's probably the smallest plane I've been in, except for my uncle's when I flew with him once or twice. So this is my last story um, of the lion, lion and the Cape Buffalo. So you think the lion is the king of the jungle. So it started out with just one lion here looking at a Cape Buffalo. And then you saw more lion. Um, you can see the one lion and the Cape Buffalo in the back. And we're like sitting there on our edge wa waiting for a fight. The lion's gonna take down this massive case Cape Buffalo because that's what it looks like. But then there's more Cape Buffalo around the back and they're walking away. And they're like, the lion's like, mm, no thanks. So our guide says that if you be end up between a lion and the Cape Buffalo, you're gonna run towards the lion, not away from the lion, which is what, one, what I, we would think because the Cape Buffalo, they're mean. And this little cat, he's supposed to be a nocturnal cat. I don't know what kind of cat he is, but he got in the middle of this and he truly just sat there as still as can be. He's like, nope, not moving. I'm not here, no one can see me and I'm not supposed to be here anyway. So I'm just gonna sit there. But um, basically the lions ended up laying there and doing their own thing. They're like, okay, we lose. We're just gonna lay there. Cape Buffalo came out. They kept eating, doing their own thing but it was so intense to sit there and watch because the lions were stalking the Cape Buffalo and there was no fight because the Cape Buffalo were like, nope, mm -mm. This is all of us. So that is the safari. And I'm doing a lot of talking more so than I planned on. But um, Marcy, were there any questions in the chat that I need to go to go um, for before I go on? Yeah, there's just a couple. You answered the one about that the animals just ignore you in the Land Rovers. That was a yes. Did the Land Rovers have closed windows? And what was the weather like? Yes, they had closed windows. They just took the top. There were other other people, not us, were in open cars, but ours had the windows that didn't come off. And the weather for us was warm and occasionally there was a little bit of rain, but the rain was like a little bit here, a little bit there, more in the evening. And then in the very, very beginning, when you landed and you were out with the street guys and stuff, did there wasn't a lot of masks happening. Was that normal or... Um, when we were outside, there weren't a lot of masks. When we okay. were inside, we would there was more masks in Kenya than in Tanzania. And we actually felt safer 
out there because we were we were outdoors all the time. So towards the end, we weren't even wearing masks in the in the van in the Land Rover anymore because that that ended up turning into our little pod. <laughs> 